Good afternoon, it's the captain here from Andertons and I'm joined by my bearded friend Tor from TC to talk about some cool new pedals from the wonderful people at TC Electronic. So, thanks for coming in. What Thank have, you for having me here. What have we got? We have the uh, Helix Phaser and the Viscous Vibe. Cool. So it's it's actually the two first effects pedals we've done ever since we since we launched the uh, the tone print line like what five years ago. Or and I remember like sitting here being amazed with an yeah. iPhone going like, how do you go? Yeah. And then you know different pedals. If you've not seen that video, you I mean, yes, you should go and watch that. But okay, cool. Yeah. So I mean, it, yeah, it's actually it's pretty crazy. So since then we've done the mini pedals, we've done yes. bigger versions, but these are actually the first two effects, and it's something we wanted to do for a long time. But uh, yeah resources are scarce so we've had other <laughs> things to do but uh, we finally found the time to do these and it's you know this really has been a labor of love at least for me because you know i'm a big hendrix fan so yeah. doing the viscous vibe was just too much fun yeah plus i got to buy an old one a real oh old really shinny univibe which you know what did that cost you a lot of money a lot. <laughs> yeah yes but now it's sitting at tc it has a nice home and i get to play it when i want to as well but i bought then, i bought an old 1964 maestro fuzz the other day well Ooh. i say the other day last year because i was thinking about trying to reissue it for the anderson's yeah. 50th anniversary 1964 the whole thing like that and the maestro fuzz is supposed to be kind of like the very first yeah. fuzz pedal ever anyway so i bought an original one cost me 400 pounds so that's about 600 dollars yeah. for you guys in america land and it sounds like a complete bag of shit. <laughs> I mean, it just and you just and you just end up sort of going. Hmm. No wonder it never caught on. You know, people just made better yeah. pedals. So we didn't reissue that in the end because I just thought no matter it looks amazing, but I just thought no matter how I spin this as a 50th anniversary, you know, thing, I'm never going to get away from. You the could fact just it's you could atrocious. just you could just make it look like that and have another sound and probably say that this is the way it sounds because nobody would know anybody. I don't well, think a lot of people ever tried. That I, ironically, that we I'm, we may do that again. You know, because it looks so it amazingly look cool. cool. But anyway, we digress. Yeah. So, but yeah, so the vibe is uh, that, how would you describe a vibe pedal to somebody that, that's never heard one before? I, it's always tough to describe effects. You mm. know, I could make weird sounds with my voice and try to say <laughs> it's kind of this, I think most people when you talk about a vibe, it's this kind of watery, thick sound, hence the, the, the viscous. Yeah. Um, or viscous, as a lot of guys in Denmark who has no idea what viscous means, but um, you'd even say whiskers, though, wouldn't you over there? Yeah, or probably. Would you say viscous? We'd just I don't know. pronounce it just, in a weird way, I guess. Uh, but it's like a pulsing. Yeah, it's it's a it's a pulsing, throbbing kind of sound that's liquid and watery. Yes, for lack of a better is. word. And you know, the story about it is really that. Uh, the Japanese company that actually made the pedal originally right. uh, wanted to emulate the sound of a Leslie speaker. Right. They failed miserably. It doesn't right. sound anything like a Leslie, but they came up with a Another sound. very complicated mm -hmm. circuit yeah. that sounds great. That was, funnily enough, I was watching the story of the crybaby the other day, yeah. and that is another effect that ha uh, I think originally was designed to replace a mid-boost circuit in a keyboard amp or something, oh, yeah. something weird I like think, that. And it, and I, it think just I think I think I read that it was they tried to make the sound of a like a horn player when they do the. Oh, uh, no, so I, I think it would. I don't know. I, yeah, I, I, whatever. But yeah. enough, there's so many cool things in this industry yeah. that are just accidents, aren't yeah. they? Tried to do one thing, ended up doing another. Yeah. So okay, so the vibe is. Let's give people an idea of what a you know. So here's a, here's a real clean sound. I should leave it off for a second. There's a familiar sort of clean sound, and then this is. So it's not a chorus, it's not a flanger, it's not a phaser, but it's in that family, isn't it? Is it is in the family. Um, it's just a slightly, we'll, we'll get more into that in a minute. Uh, so cool, um, what's the other one? So Helix Phaser is a phaser. Yep. And you know, I think a lot of guys, when they think of phasers, they immediately think eruption. And yep. you know, that is a classic, that's a great sound. Yep. But what we wanted to do is something different because you know, 
without naming any names, if you want that sound, there's another pedal that you know is there might be. Yeah. pretty famous for doing that sound. Yeah. But there's so many different types of phaser sound. So tons of old Pink Floyd has been, you know, yeah. has phasers on them. That's not that pedal. That you know, yeah. it's different type of phasing sound. Um, Radiohead is famous for doing a lot of cool stuff. New bands like Tim and Parlor, they all have these different phasers because phasing is really there's a lot of different sonic opportunities when doing phasing. Um, and what we wanted to do was make a pedal that would give you more options than you typically get on a phaser to right. be able to dial in a lot of different sounds to be basically to get inspired and write some, some cool music. So again, let's just, so clean and here's a phase just in case you're not familiar. Instant Pink Floyd sounding yeah. guitar, yeah. E minor, phaser pedal. There you go. Sound like yeah. Pink Floyd. Um, so okay, cool. So they're the they're the two new ones, which we'll go into a little bit more depth. But stay tuned as well because we're going to revisit a couple of drive pedals that TC uh, launched as part of the original uh, range of pedals. So it would have been five years ago. We did okay, but I think it's fair to say that the you know the, the world of distortion pedals is just packed. You know, the world needs a new distortion pedal like it needs a hole in the head. Uh, so what TC have decided to do is uh, take a bit of a gamble on repricing these at a, at a much lower price, hoping that you guys react by buying thousands of them, and then of course by making thousands of them, they'll be able to carry it on as a sort of an ongoing thing. But it's called a business plan. It's called a business plan. We don't normally <laughs> do these in the music industry, but you know we're trying. Uh, but stay, have a little listen to these because these these are now sub. 40 pounds each, so it's kind of crazy money for a decent pedal. But back to the the, the the Vibe Viscous. So I think if I if I sort of play some nice open chords and you move some of the yep. knobs, and because and, there's nothing really, you know, intensity, volume, speed, they're all pretty much they're standard. Pretty, they're pretty standard. If you look at, you know, pretty much anybody who uses a Vibe of those, you know, the classic mm -hmm. guys, so Hendrix, Robin yeah. Trower, David Gilmour, the trick is they pretty much do this and then really? adjust this. Yeah, we actually at, at, at some point we actually considered just removing those two knobs because isn't it crazy with those up that file? Like, yeah. It's actually a little bit, but I think that's part of the idea. <laughs> I'm surprised actually that's a lot more usable. I'm so used to pedals that when you have the intensity yeah. up full it just becomes a completely yeah. stupid effect. It's um, you know we we model it exactly after the old one and this is this is as far as it goes okay. and the weird thing is with the volume in particular you really have to crank it more or less all the way up to get unity gain. If right, you back okay. it down it just turns down the volume of your guitar. And, so and that's authentic as in that's the, the way it is and we decided just to copy it you know yeah. you could argue well maybe it'd be nice to add a few more db but we covered the original circuit so so it, it's, it's the same and then of course you can control the speed and the reason for the big knob is you can do that with your foot right so um, yeah. you know some the original um, univibe had, uh, had the pedal and then it had a, a treadle uh, to be able to control the, the speed you can do it with your foot like this so you get So it's nice fat sound. It is a very, very. I mean, fat it's, it's odd because you, you're going to get guitar players that are all about you know analog over digital yeah. and all that kind of stuff. But there's none, none of the tone print pedals are analog, are they? I mean, it's all. No, I've, what we do with all of them is the fact that we keep the we keep the dry signal intact. So your dry right. signal passes through the pedal analog, and then we add in the analog domain we add the wet signal that's been digitally processed. Right. Um, and. Um, so that way you can say that the, the core of your sound is still the same, yeah. but there's a digital part added uh, to that. And obviously that gives us some opportunities, yeah. like for example, uh, replicate a very complicated circuit. A Univibe is a, is a silly circuit. It's actually there inside a, an original Univibe, there's a light bulb with a thimble on top of it. And that's, the light is basically going on and off 
and that's controlling the LFO, and the LFO is actually the speed of the of wow. the bike. So that's how they do it. And obviously, if you want to do that today, it's a very complicated, very. Well, I know Korg reissued the new vibe, didn't they, or something? And the things about this big with yeah. like every uh, oscillation, yeah. sort of frequency on it, and, yeah. and it ends up just being kind of like too complicated yeah. to, 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 so to use. For us, we figured, you know, we want to make something that sounds as good, but mm. you know, in a in a size where you can actually, you know, it's a. I love that effect, but I can't justify having like have it fill up half my pedal board because I'll, you know, I won't use it on every single song, and you know, because we can do it digitally, the price is also different than having to yeah. have a guy basically measuring light bulbs and screen them in and you know all that stuff. <laughs> So, I mean, th those are the two basic settings that you get with the original yep. Univibe. There's the, uh, it's weird, the chorus one is the vibe. Yes. And the vibrato is actually the same effect you're hearing, but with the drive signal cutaway. Oh, really? Oh, I see. So you get a proper vo yeah. uh, uh, volume kind of. It's, yeah, sound, it is that it? kind of. So of course you can back it down and get the intensity up. It's it's um, it's different, very different to sort of like a tremolo kind of effect, isn't yeah. it? It's it's. Uh, harder to you don't want to go too over the top with vibrato no, because it, it can it can get out of tune almost yeah. like you know to the point where you go like oh yeah watch is out. this really cool you know It's the more subtle, just to add yeah, some depth, bit of, yeah. isn't it? Rather than rather than a real overt kind of effect. One of the things we were saying before that can really mess you up with with this kind of a pedal is you have to. If you're the sort of player that just naturally adds vibrato to everything, even chords, if you can, you you know. So I don't know. You might play um, like that. Once you've got this kind of effect on. Yeah, and, you, and you do the vibrato as well, it just completely cocks it all up. The same for, for a, a vibe kind of effect. So you really want to really play all your chords and, and notes kind of as straight as possible. Yeah. So obviously, like all the other pedals... I like pedals, the, vi I like the, the vibe. I yeah, like the chorus, the... sorry, better. Yeah. Um, that's... You lose quite a lot of the high end as well, don't you? You with, do, with yeah. The vibe, yeah. Which I, which I also like, you know. It is this kind of mellow sound. Yeah, let's see if we can hit. Yeah, it's very cool in its in its kind of chorus mode that isn't a chorus mode. Yeah. Um, so anyway, so there's a couple of extra little things in here, of course. We okay. can't help ourselves. So yep. yes, it is a 
copy of the original pedal, but mm -hmm. we added a few extras. So first of all, obviously, we have the tone print yeah. thing. So you can actually go in and tweak the pedal if you want to and change the way the Univibe sounds. Yeah. If you don't like the original one, you want to add more top end or whatever. And are you going to have, again, sort of like downloadable artist patches? Of course, we, there's, there is a few stuff. already. And we'll Has Jimmy Hendrix done one yet? Or Not yet. We're hoping to... Uh, that one together. Yeah, that would be, would be nice. But there are some cool, young, bluesy yeah. guys who, who we're, yeah. we're talking to now. Cool. Um, but obviously, part of that also means that we can add some other stuff as well. So on the regular tone print yep. we have, we actually added uh, some regular pitch vibrato to the vibe, which gives us this kind of cool extra dimension, I think. So, so that's going from that to... to it's got like a wah kind yeah. of. Yeah. Is, it, is, there, is that just coincidence or is it actually some sort of auto wah kind of thing? It is not. It's, the, it's us tweaking the, uh, the Univibe to sound different than what the original one does. Because, you know, because it's digital, we have the option yep. of tweaking the filters and stuff yep. like that. So it's basically just taking the same algorithm and just messing about with some stuff. And, you know, anybody can do that. The artist, if you want to download the editor for yourself, you can actually cool. go in and, and, and tweak some of the stuff. I've realized as well that the young up and coming blues person, he's probably, I don't know how young he is anymore, that this reminds me of us. Have you uh, got into Philip Sace? I am a massive ah, Philip. Because that, yeah. he's got that kind of, uh, those absolutely cranked out Fender kind of amplifiers. Yeah. A little, not too much gain, but uh, no. enough. And a tube screamer and then yeah, that, that thing. Yeah, that kind of yeah. thing going on. Yeah. And he's phenomenal. Yeah. Um, Another thing to show you is, so typically when you use the Vibe, a lot of guys use it in one of two ways. So it's either that kind of slow, syrupy, mm -hmm. kind of Pink Floydish kind of yeah. way, or they use it in a faster mode to kind of, you know, get almost a Leslie type sound. Yeah. And of course you can put your big foot on it and you can yeah. turn it that way, but yeah. we added a little extra thing. So if you play something, I'll... It's a fast slow switch. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm just pressing it down and it ramps up to the fast speed. If I slow if I release it again, it's gonna ramp down to the slow speed. I did notice as well something when you're switching it, was it just me? When you switch it off, does the effect immediately go yeah. or is there a fade? Yeah, there's actually a fade and you can, on the bottom of the pedal, there's yeah. a, if you remove the, the back of the pedal, the lid, there's yeah. a little dip switch. You can set it to either cut off right. immediately right. or right. actually right. fade out. So what it does is actually slowly, you know, it's listening to the modulation yeah. and when the modulation stops, it shuts off. So we can show you guys. <laughs> I can notice that a couple of times at the beginning, and I was thinking, is that effect there, or am I just yeah. imagining it? But that's very mm. cool. And of course, if you don't like that, if you want it to be exactly like the old one, yeah. there's tone prints for that as well, where right. it won't do the ramping, and you can actually go into the editor and control how fast it ramps and how fast it ramps down, and you know, be a little crazy about it. Yeah, that, uh, this is going to be hugely popular, isn't it? This one, I love it. <laughs> It's just so it's fat sounding, yeah. isn't it? Really fat. And it's kind of, it's a little bit of a forgotten effect, I think. You know, to me, it's always been, because I'm such a big Hendrix fan, it's always been my favorite modulation effect. Um, but a lot, of people, a lot of people use it, and it seems like a lot of guys, when they use it, they always go for that kind of. Hendrixy kind of thing, but it yeah. actually it's usable for a lot of different yeah. things. Yeah. Tor was telling me that again, completely flummoxed me because I didn't realize this, but that the the kind of the real classic Hendrixy vibe uh, sounds came from having the vibe pedal in front of the drive pedal. So we've got a, a fairly heavy drive sound coming from the dark matter, um, and we're going to put the vibe over the top, and then Tor's just going to do some sort of you know a la Hendrixy kind of thing. <laughs> It 
is a, a definitely reminiscent of that kind of tone, isn't yeah. it? So you want that kind of almost over the top drive yeah. to get that kind of crazy machine gun yeah. type of sound. And obviously, the reason why we're doing this that way is because you know Hendrix wasn't using drive pedals. Right. He was cranking a Marshall, nice. so yeah, there wasn't a way to actually put any of the yeah. effects yeah. after the distortion. So yeah. to get that authentic sound, you've got to do that. Yeah. If you had a fuss, yeah. on the other hand, you'd put that in front of right. it to get. Yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah I imagine the fuzz would really struggle, wouldn't if, it? If you, if, if, uh, you think, if you think of some of those Hendrix sounds where it's not, it's almost not music, it's just like weird spacey music. sound where it goes like woof, 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 that kind of thing, that's the yeah. fuss into yeah. the univibe. And you yeah. don't hear the modulation, you just hear the throbbing thing, yeah. which is, it's fun to just do that and go crazy with the whammy bar. Cool. Okay, well look, let's talk about the Helix. Yeah. So, I mean, as I said before, uh, shortly, I mean, this is designed to get a lot of sounds yep. out of a phaser. So, um, a lot of phasers, without naming any names, are a little bit of one-trick ponies. They yep. do a great sound, but yep. if you don't like that sound, it's kind of tough luck. Yeah. Um, we try to what we try to do with this is basically get a lot of cool sounds out of it. So, just put it on. I'll just crank the mix up because. Yeah. I always like my effects a little exaggerated, don't yep. know why. I put everything at 12 o'clock. So there's two basic settings on the pedal. The vintage one, which is just your classic kind mm -hmm. of. There's a lot more top end there, isn't there, there straight is. away? Yeah. Um, so I like that sound a lot. Yeah. So, and obviously, I mean, you can control the regular stuff that mm -hmm. you control on a on a phaser pedal. Let so me, let me show people. You yeah. play and I'll. Just yeah. like 12 o'clock setting to be yeah. this year. And right. you know, that's what we always, mm. most pedal manufacturers, we try to do something. 12 yeah. o'clock sounds pretty decent. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then nobody ever uses it at 12 o'clock, do they? No, you always try to Yeah, I know, you think yeah, I'll find because, a better uh, tone. Uh, right around there is better. <laughs> it's the classic, it's the engineering trick of, you know, just, yeah, can you put it up a bit? Can put it up a bit more? Yeah, 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 now it's there. Now it's there. So, um, so yeah. And do you want to, would you, again, same thing, would you have, would you put the drive after the Helix, or is this typically where you practice? This is, this depends on what you want to achieve, mm -hmm. um, because if we talked about, like, the legendary phaser sound, which is obviously Eruption yeah. and early Van Halen, and it's the same thing, Eddie used a crank Marshall, right. no effects loop, so, you know, Straight in the front. If you want to, if you want to get that sound, do you put wanna, it in do front. You want to play eruption for us? I now? totally <laughs> don't want to play eruption. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not because I don't. I can't no, do it. It's because I, of I, copyright issues. Camp. Oh really? No, no, no. I, I was about to say <laughs> I can't it's absolutely that. because I can't. Yeah. Um, so well, let's play. Let's let's at least hear something yeah, uh, that, that can, sort of yeah. you know. So I would do this just to get it into that sort of crazy mode. Crazy mode. It's, it, it becomes, what's the thing about having the, the phaser in front of the drive? I guess it just, it, it's much more apparent in the mix, isn't it? It takes over, it affects the drive yeah. differently. Um, it's not like, I mean, I, I suppose the only modulation pedal that I've got on my board is a chorus pedal, which yeah. I always have you after the drive. Yeah. And, I, and I have it very subtle in the mix, and I just yeah. use it as like a fattening sound. Yeah. Whereas these aren't, you know, these are like all about changing the sound yeah, radically, they're, they're, aren't they? they're designed to, you know, you know when they're on. Yeah. And, you know, for, the, for this type of stuff, what you want, it's, it's like a filter. So, and because it moves so slow, it kind of just, 
it just changes the guitar tone slowly over time. Yeah. Um, what what's the um, the smooth one then, rather than the, the vintage smooth one? one? I don't know if we should have called it smooth. I'll, you can hear from well, you yourself. designed it. So yeah. You yourself well, to you know, I decided, but uh, we'll see. So here we go. <laughs> Sounds like the feedback's much more cranked on on the smooth version. It is, you know. it is, and it's it's the way a phaser works is basically you have a a set of uh, of notches yep. um, where you boost the frequencies. Yeah, um, and they're very narrow, and then you move these frequencies, and that's what's creating the, the phase, the phase, the phaser effect. Um, and depending on how many of those you add, yeah, it changes the effect quite drastically. Um, so the vintage one has four, mm -hmm. and that's like the classic, your classic mm -hmm. phaser. Um, the smooth one has 12 of those. All oh, right. So more, more. equals and Well, it, it, it's a more, uh, I mean, the, the, the feedback's always been a strange, you know, you often see uh, controls on flanges and phasers and stuff, yeah. talking about feedback. And it's got really nothing to do with what we would class as you know, feedback, if you no. like that. But it, it's almost that sort of, um, it's even the, it's almost like a wary kind of effect, it is. isn't it? That's on there, and you can just hear it's much more pronounced. Yeah. You know that. I can see why I think I can see why now you say you think smooth is the wrong terminology for it because yeah. the other sound yeah. sounds smoother. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't, but I don't know what you. I love words though yeah. for guitar yeah. stuff. You yeah. know, it's like you know. It's like the vibe we talked about before, chorus and vibrato, and it has nothing to do well, with that. Well, it's Leo Fender, isn't it? It is. You know, yeah. because you know. Yeah. That's not vibrato. a tremolo no. unit. Yeah. <laughs> but it is a tremolo. Yeah. Unit, you know? <laughs> no, it is. But yes, yeah. what we call it, but it yeah. isn't one. Yeah. Um, so yes, nobody knew what anything was called back in the day, did nope. they? I think they just they made it all up. It up yeah. all and we still do time. that, obviously, yeah. to this day. <laughs> so smooth is the unsmooth one. Um, but it's a cool sound in, in any case. I let think. me have a, let me have a play. Yeah. I just want to sort of get into it. I want to get into it, man. There um, you go. So, because I, I always, I know, I know, if I was doing this video with Rob, Rob would absolutely launch out with all the sort of driven sounds with phase on it. But I always associated it much more with a sort of a funk. <laughs> So, um, I gather both these pedals as well are under 100 pounds each? Yeah, they are 95 uh, pounds. Nice! Yeah. Nice! Okay, cool. And available from now? Available from now, yes. Available from now. Uh, cool. Well, look, let's quickly whiz over and revisit these two. So, um, if I remember rightly, Mojo was the sort of the lighter overdrive, yeah. dark is, is the, the heavier one. Um, and did you voice them on any particular pedal or are they just a sort of a... A generic kind they of. are sort of generic what we wanted to achieve is the first the first thing we wrote down when we just tried to do these was you know it was going to be not a tube screamer so not a tube screamer because you know yeah, there's plenty of tube screamers on, on the market today so there are a few things we wanted to try and do with these mm -hmm. so personally i mainly use amp distortion when i yeah, I played, and one of the things that I felt always was lacking with drive pedals was compared to amp distortion is that the amp distortion always sounded fuller, mm -hmm. and that's because a lot of most drive pedals actually cut the bass to a certain degree. We didn't want that. We wanted to try to achieve something where you actually felt that kind of thick right. sound that you get from amp distortion. Um, and the other thing is that I didn't want it to uh, compress too much. Yeah. So some dry pedals do that, and it's great for certain yeah. things. We wanted something where if you pick lightly, yeah, it's you know it's going to react to that. If you pick yeah. you pick hard, and it's it you know it actually. Well, let, let, let's have a little listen. Uh, I mean, we're, we're probably using all the entirely wrong amp for this. We've got a very clean amplifier on yeah. the go here, um, but we're. Some... Tiny 
tiny bit of yeah. gain on there, really, isn't there? <laughs> cleans up though. Voices. What's the difference between the two uh, voices? The difference is that for some guitars, let's say you're playing like a Les Paul in mm -hmm. the neck position, the amount because there's so much low in there, right. it can get a little woofy. So this just cuts a bit of. Low. And then the dark matter is much heavier, so and differently voiced as well for a, probably a more modern tone. Yeah. Uh, in fact, it's almost like where the mojo leaves. It's, this is kind yeah, of where this it, takes it is, off. Isn't and it? it's you know it's not it's not voiced massively different. It's a little bit more modern, but it's the same kind of philosophy that's behind right. this one as well. voice switch do the same thing? No, it actually doesn't. Um, this one uh, switches the uh, the uh, focus of the mids. So top one is one is uh, lower mids. And to be fair, what's not to like when the pedal's only thirty-five yeah. pounds or thirty-six pounds or something? But you know, should mention the uh, the bass and treble controls on a lot of pedals. Um, those are passive controls, which yeah. means that all you can do is basically deduct from the, from yeah. the signal. These are active, meaning that if you set them in the center position, there's a little detent here. Yeah. Um, it's neutral, and then you can cut bass and cut treble, but you can also boost it. So if you want like to really add some low end, or if you want yeah. a biting tone, you can actually add more than you get out of the, uh, out of the, the guitar alone. You've got a habit. I like your pedals with everything on 12. You're yeah. obviously a good designer because it's just like I just like them how you yeah. like them. <laughs> so. <laughs> Well, thank you very much to Tor for coming in and showing us these two pedals. Uh, in fact, all four of these pedals. Yep. I will put a link in the description section below so that you can dive over uh, to another website and find out all the technical spec and everything about that. And should you even wish to order one, I'll put details about how to do that too. Uh, so for now, thanks very much again to Tor. Thank I've you. been the captain and we'll see you next time. Ta-ta.